So uh, there's a lot more white cells so than there should be. Exactly. And they're huge. They're and way bigger than the red cells. Right. So there's a what we call leukocytosis, so leukocytosis. increase in the white blood cell count. Ooh, I, I think know. those are blasts, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, maybe they're, they've got little blebs coming off the cytoplasm. I can't remember if that means something or not. There, there's also this like kind of orangey color in the cytoplasm here, like little strands of orange stuff, but I don't know if that's meaningful. So those are a bunch of owl rods. Oh, they're a bunch of owl rods. Oh. A bunch of owl rods. And so then yes, probably meaningful. Look at how there's sort of this bilobed appearance. I was going to say, is it, it monocytic? Is this, is this stuff monocytic? It's not. No. Okay. Um, so I learned it is cottage loaf. And cottage loaf. It's a, it's a British bread. So if you watch the Great British Baking Show, I've they actually it made it okay. once. Okay. And I was so excited because every time I say cottage loaf, people look at me like I'm crazy. But it's the term my mentor used, and I actually love it better than bilobed or like hourglass or any of those because it often is bigger at one end than the other. See how that's a uh -huh. bigger? And that's what they do with this bread is they have a bigger ball on the bottom and they have a smaller ball on top and then they stick their finger through to connect them. If um, you're watching this video, please go and find that Great British Baking Show episode and put a link to the Cottage Loaf episode down below. The first person to do it, I won't give you any prize, but I'll give you a special bonus point in my heart. Um, that would actually be fun is to have people go and see how many of the analogies that we have here and they can put videos below. So feel free to do that if you like. It'll enrich the, the video experience for everyone. So this again is, is sort of an important finding. So okay. this is Now actually, all I can think about is how much I want to eat some cottage loaf. I'm not sure what it tastes like, but bread sounds real good. I'm hungry. I've actually made it before. It is actually pretty good. I want a piece next time you do it. All right. Uh, this is APL. And, APL. Oh. Uh, so acute promyelocytic leukemia, and those, this is the really important one, right? This is the really important one, but this is a variant of it, oh. a specific, less common variant. So normally, with acute promyelocytic leukemia, you have pancytopenia, and like rare, and I'm going to call them blasts. I know they are technically atypical promyelocytes, but I'm going to consider them to be blast equivalents for simplicity. So. Okay. You've got very few circulating blasts, and in, in you're like looking, and especially at the um, edge of the smear, because that's where they. I don't so know you really have to hunt for them. You're huh? hunting for them, and you're really looking for this cell here, those cells with lots of owl rods, because that's going to make you think, oh my gosh, I really, really need to call people and rule out acute promyelocytic leukemia. This is the microgranular. Microgranular variant. And I prefer microgranular to hypogranular because if you look at it under electron microscopy, the granules are actually there. They're you just, just really tiny. You just can't see them oh, under cool. light microscopy. Um, and are these, this is the one that you can treat with transretinoic acid, right? Atra. Atra. And they get better basically, right? They are if you have, usually. Usually. So there are variant translocations and ah. some of them don't respond to Atra. But if you have the classic 1517 translocation, uh, they respond very well to Atra. So a APL is sort of one of those things of it, where pathology is really important because if you can get the patient through the first two weeks of treatment, they do extraordinarily well. Wow. Like there are almost, I, I can't think of any APL patient I've had that has relapsed. That's or, amazing. So they do extraordinarily well. But then they're the ones that come in and they're already in DIC or they already have brain bleeding. And oh, and they get coagulopathic problems yeah. with this disease too? Is that right? right? The granules. No, oh, okay. There's tissue factor in those granules. Oh, okay. Now, this is all coming back to me now very slowly. And so, um, so basically they either die right when you diagnose them oh. or they do exceedingly well. So it can go and either way. And not a lot huh? in the middle. Wow. So it, it's really one of the, so these, these, these are, are the urgent ones, phone calls. These are the ones that will bring me up at two in the morning to look. Wow. And bring my flow tech in for overtime payment and all that other good stuff. Because it matters right away. It okay. matters right away. And it, and they have a, a pretty specific flow immunophenotype that can help. Okay. Um, and I say pretty specific because there is something that can mimic, but really like fish and PCR for 1517 or uh, just a raw, raw translocation is going to be your diagnostic. Okay. That is the peripheral blood of someone who has the more classic APL. Okay. And it kind of has that same bilobe, you know, cottage look ish nucleus, but see the granules? Yeah. 
Lots of granules. And I mean, this is not really a great picture, but is like one of the only cells that is in the peripheral smear, which is why it's there. Wow.